what's up guys, Christian Brindle here, and today I'm going to go through with you my Medicare Turn in 65 presentation from start to finish, so that way you guys have something that you can practice, something that you can actually follow step by step if you're just learning how to present Medicare to a Medicare beneficiary. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. This video is sponsored by none other than Lead Heroes, you guys. Lead Heroes has got you covered when it comes to telemarketed leads and virtual staffing. On the lead side, whether it be Medicare supplement leads, final expense leads, turning 65 leads, they just got something for everybody. They can also actually have you plug in with one of their virtual staff members on the staffing side to where you can pay by the hour for one of their trained and very well vetted staff members to help you out in your business in a virtual assistant format. Just because you watch this video, they're going to give you 10% off any order you make on their website. Link to the site can be found down in the description, so go ahead and check them out. Okay, guys, so Medicare Turning 65 presentation. I think a lot of people make it harder than it needs to be. The main thing I would tell you guys before I get started is three tips that I've learned over the years. Now, I, I started selling Medicare roughly about 10 years ago with the, when I was about the age of 20. And one thing that I learned over time, over doing tons of presentations, right? I might have done over a hundred thousand presentations for people on Medicare. I've done so many presentations for people over the years. And one thing I've learned over time is I, I've tweaked my approach. I've altered the wording that I use and actually what I say to make sure that it's the best, the most crisp and the most clear and concise way of explaining it to the beneficiary. So the first thing I would give you guys in terms of pointers would be you want to make sure to keep it simple. There's so many people on Medicare that just have a hard time understanding Medicare. I always tell new agents, if you're having a hard time understanding Medicare, imagine what your clients are going through, right? They're not licensed. They haven't gone through the, the steps to actually learn about insurance. So it's way more difficult for them than it is for you. So make sure to keep it incredibly simple. There's so many agents out there that they're just really trying to wow the client with their knowledge. But what they're doing is they're getting way too into the weeds and they're losing the client and they're, they're just losing them in terms of just going too in detail on certain aspects that they just don't really need to know. So that's number one. Keep it as simple as possible. Number two, make sure that you are trying to get through your presentation as quickly as possible without leaving out important details. Why is this? In today's society and today's day and age, you are going to notice that we have incredibly short attention spans. And this actually affects seniors as well because they have smartphones, they have social media, and they have learned that their minds have adjusted to this current day and age just like ours has. So the attention span just isn't there for the most part. So there's a certain point where if you go too far, you're going to lose them and they're just gonna start dozing off and kind of their mind's gonna start wandering and they're not gonna retain the information. It's all about retention in this type of situation okay so number two make sure that it's not too long and number three make sure that you are presenting the information in an unbiased manner so you're obviously, obviously you're presenting Medicare Advantage and Medicare supplement to a person that's turned 65 in an educational manner I am of the opinion that you're gonna be best off by not pushing them in one direction or the other but presenting them on equal playing fields so that way they can go the direction they feel is gonna best suit their needs and preferences and you're going to have a happy client opposed to just pushing them in one direction they might not have wanted another agent comes in and presents what you wouldn't and then they take the client right out from under you right so remember we're independent you're able to offer pretty much whatever they want so without further ado let's because i just jump right into this presentation okay so i'm going to start off with explaining original Medicare so every time this is so I'm, I'm just gonna go through like I'm presenting to a client right so I'm not gonna pause I'm not gonna explain I'm just gonna go so that way you guys can listen to this over and over and over again and you can copy my presentation and this presentation has made me millions of dollars in commission over the years in selling Medicare okay so this is a tried and true presentation and it works I promise so step by step so let's just get started okay all right, so the first thing we're going to do is, I believe in order to understand your options with Medicare, you're going to need to understand what I would call original Medicare. Everything you've ever heard about centers around original Medicare, and there's actually two parts of Medicare that come from the government. And everything else you've ever heard about comes from an insurance company. Everything else, I almost guarantee it. So you have two parts of Medicare that actually come from the government. You have what's known as Medicare Part A, and you have what's known as Medicare Part B. 
Now, Medicare Part A comes at no cost. That's essentially what you paid for over the course of your working life, okay? Now, Medicare Part B, on the other hand, has a monthly premium attached to it that in 2022 is $170.10 a month, okay? So everybody pays that. It's a standardized premium. If your income is in an incredibly high income bracket or incredibly low, it might differ, but for 90% of folks, they're going to be looking at that $170.10 a month. Now, the way I would best think about Medicare is it's black and white medical coverage. It, where it, the Medicare Part A and B works like two pieces of a puzzle that fit together to give you medical coverage. Okay, So they both cover different things, but when you put them together, they give you medical coverage. That's the best way to think of it. So when you have them both together, you're going to get coverage for things like hospitalizations, doctor's appointments, surgeries, medical equipment, and so on and so forth. Now, Medicare on the medical coverage it provides you does not cover 100% of your expenses, right? It's typically going to pay about 80% and leave behind 20% for you to pay, okay? Now, with most insurances, probably the insurance that you may, may, maybe even have now or any insurance you've had throughout your working life will typically have what's known as a stop loss or a maximum out of pocket, right? To, uh, an amount that prevents you from ever spending too much over the course of the year like a safety blanket. Medicare does not have that. So that 20% could literally equal up to anything. If you had a $100,000 hospital bill, for example, you could potentially be stuck with about 20% of that, right? So that's the biggest hole, in my opinion, when it comes to Medicare, but there's other holes in, in, in addition to that. Medicare, like I said, is black and white medical coverage. It only provides coverage for medical expenses. So Medicare doesn't cover things like prescription drugs, dental, vision, or hearing. So those are the holes that Medicare comes with and everything you've ever heard about is going to pair with your Medicare to plug up these holes in a certain ex extent, okay? Now, with Medicare, when you're actually looking at your options, it might seem like when you're turning 65, you're getting inundated with options, right? You're getting inundated with mailers, television commercials, advertisements, phone calls, and sometimes it can seem like there are 10 million different kinds of ways you can actually structure your Medicare, but there's only two ways that you can go about setting up your Medicare. And everything you've ever heard about is going to fall into one of these two categories. And if you can determine which way these two categories I'm about to go through with you is better for you, that's 80% of the difficulty right there of getting on to Medicare and understanding Medicare. So I'm gonna make this incredibly simple for you by simplifying it really to just one out of two paths. And both sides have their pros and cons, positives and negatives. And I'm not of the opinion that one is better than the other. I just think that they're different. And they both have good and bad to them. So without further ado, let's kind of jump into that. So in the Medicare world, you have what's known as Medicare supplements. And then you have what's known as Medicare Advantage plans. So just for the sake of um, time, I'm going to start with the Medicare supplement plans. Because I think that might be, take me a little bit longer to get through. Okay, So we just talked about original Medicare. Part A and B, what it does, right? Everything you pick up in the Medicare world is going to center around that, right? But original Medicare covers 80% of the medical bills, like we said. You have the $170 a month for Medicare Part B. And when you go with a Medicare supplement, also known as a Medigap, right? It's two names for the same thing, but kind of like tomato, tomato kind of thing, right? They're interchangeable. You pick up a Medicare supplement plan, and you pick that up through a private insurance company. Right? An example to that might be like a Blue Cross Blue Shield, a Cigna, Mutual of Omaha, Humana, etc. Right? And this private insurance company is going to be your secondary to Medicare. It's going to pay after Medicare on medical bills. So a good way to think about a Medicare supplement plan is its job, and its only job really, is to pick up the 20% on the medical bills that Medicare leaves behind. Okay? Think about it like this. It's going to mirror Medicare. So it's only going to cover things that Medicare already pays first. It's going gonna, it's gonna to act like a copycat insurance, okay? So Medicare pays first, the supplement pays afterward. If Medicare doesn't cover something, neither does your Medicare supplement plan. So if Medicare doesn't cover things like prescription drugs or dental, neither will your Medicare supplement plan. Its only job is to be a secondary on medical expenses. Now, Medicare supplement plans can vary. Um, where I actually live in the state of Utah, usually I think a good estimate for a Medicare supplement is probably about $120 a month, although that can be more or less depending on the actual plan that you actually wanted to go with, right? 
With Medicare supplements, you're double covered, right? So you have a primary in Medicare and a secondary in the insurance company. And so between the two, you have very, very strong medical coverage. I'd say it's the closest thing that money can buy to full medical coverage in the Medicare world, okay? So it's very, very good medical coverage. Of course, the $120 estimate that I'm giving you in terms of the premium would be in addition to the Medicare Part B premium, that's $170 a month. Now, since the Medicare supplement, like I just explained, does not cover prescription drugs or dental, enter Medicare Part D. Medicare Part D is a separate plan that's a pharmaceutical plan. D for drugs is a great way to think about Medicare Part D. And with Medicare Part D, it's, a, it's an individual prescription drug plan that you also pick up through an, an insurance company, through a private insurance company. It doesn't have to be the same insurance company as your Medicare supplement. It can be, but it doesn't really have any bearing on that whatsoever. You just want to pick the best prescription drug plan for you, and it's, an, it's separate altogether from your Medicare supplement plan. So it's two separate policies that have really nothing to do with one another. Now, I would give an estimate for a Medicare Part D plan of about $20 a month. However, they can be less and they can be more depending on the specific prescriptions that you are taking. Okay. Now, of course, if you want a dental plan or a dental vision and hearing plan, that's, of course, a separate plan as well. So there are programs out there that are individual dental plans or their dental vision and hearing plans with all three. I'd give an estimate of about $30 a month for a plan like that. So when you go this way with a Medicare supplement, you are literally having to pick up three to four different plans that all do something differently. You have three to four different cards that all have a different job and three to four different premiums that are all paid a different way. So for most people, this is a much more confusing way to structure their Medicare, mainly due to the fact that they're used to having one card throughout their lives that cover everything, okay? Now, I'm gonna quickly go through the pros and the cons of having a Medicare supplement plan in my eyes, okay? So the positives are, like I mentioned a second ago, the medic with between Medicare as your primary and the supplement as your secondary, you're going to have close to full medical coverage. It's the closest thing that money can buy, and I would call it top shelf medical coverage, right? It's the best medical coverage you're probably going to find anywhere. You have very close to full medical coverage, and you have very, very little out of pocket, if any, okay? The other thing is most insurances have networks of hospitals and doctors. You might have experienced this throughout your life. You have to stay within your insurance company's network, okay? With the Medicare supplement plan, as long as the provider takes original Medicare first, they're also going to take your Medicare supplement regardless of who the insurance company is that you pick. Um, nowadays, probably 98% of doctors nationwide accept original Medicare. It works the same in all 50 states and across state lines as it does in your home state. So you really don't have to worry about staying in network or provider networks. It's very portable and you can pretty much use it everywhere. So that's a very, very cool feature of a Medicare supplement plan. Those would be the two positives as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk about the negatives of a Medicare supplement plan. So I kind of touched on one of them already. It's going to be more confusing for the average person. I think most people that get onto Medicare that go this direction, it's a little bit of a, of a transition period for them. It's a little bit of an adjustment period because they're not used to having all these different plans that all have a different job, okay? Um, it's kind of easy to, rem to, to forget about one and what it actually does and say, what is this for again? What, what is this one supposed to do again? And that can be a little bit of a rough adjustment period for the average person, okay? Now, with the Medicare supplement plan also, I gave the example earlier of about $120 a month ballpark, right? Well, that price is going to continuously go up as you get older. It's going to continuously get more expensive. And every single Medicare supplement plan does it. I don't care which company it is. They all do it at least somewhat. Now, some companies go up more than others. And my job as a broker is to help you find one that has a good rate increase history and has the least likelihood of going up more as you get older. Okay, so that's, but that's a negative. Even a small rate increase every year is still a rate increase, okay? The last negative I'm going to talk about with Medicare supplement plan, and I, I view it as a negative, with you turning 65, you are in your open to Medicare window, okay? And that means you can get any Medicare supplement plan you want with no health questions and no underwriting. Um, they have to accept you. It's a straight shot, okay? But let's say you start with a Medicare supplement company and it has a 25% rate increase and you want to change to a different one a year or two later. Or let's say you start with a Medicare Advantage plan on this side of the coin and you decide you want to go over to a Medicare supplement later. 
Well, once you're outside of your new to Medicare window, they can ask you health questions, they can put you through underwriting, and if medically you can't qualify for that insurance company's criteria, they don't have to accept you. They can decline you, and you might end up stuck on the plan you're on now, or you might not be able to switch your Medicare supplement later due to medical questionnaires. Typically, to, to, to not be able to qualify for any plans underwriting or health questionnaires, you have to have some pretty chronic things wrong with you. Normally I can find one that will take you, but I can never guarantee that. I can never promise that. So the only time to guarantee your acceptance into a Medicare supplement is the first time you get onto Medicare um, like you are right now. Okay. So that's your Medicare supplement plans from a 10,000 foot view. I would say in this scenario, in my home state where I'm actually um, you know, kind of basing some of these numbers on, you're probably looking at anywhere between $300 to $350 a month in total premium for everything put together. Um, it could vary depending on the state that you're in. Okay, um, So that's your Medicare supplement plans. Let's talk about Medicare Advantage plans. Okay, So with the Medicare Advantage plan, it starts the same way as over here. You have Part A and Part B. You still pay the mo monthly premium for Medicare Part B of $170.10 a month. But instead of running your Medicare through the government, you run your Medicare through a private insurance company. So think about it like this. This private insurance company that you pick is going to be responsible for administering your Medicare benefits. They're taking over the responsibility of paying your claims for Medicare. So they're the ones that are paying your claims. Medicare doesn't pay 80% anymore like they do over here. Now that takes a big burden off of Medicare's shoulders as you probably can imagine. So because they're willing to do that, the government, Medicare, agrees to fund the private insurance company every month to take care of you and they get a pretty substantial amount of funding. Because of this, in mo many areas, Medicare Advantage plans can typically come at a zero dollar monthly premium. And in my area, it's actually probably going to be anywhere between zero to forty dollars a month. However, I would say probably 75% of plans in my area are zero dollar monthly premiums. And you typically have very competitive benefits on the zero dollar premium plans. And there are plans that you can find that are 30 bucks a month and there might be a better option available in certain perspectives on, on a zero dollar monthly premium plan. So if you picked up a zero dollar monthly premium plan, let's say, all that you would have to pay for Medicare and your Medicare out the door would be the Medicare Part B premium of $170.10 a month, okay? Now, the Medicare Advantage plan is very different than a Medicare supplement plan. It is an all-in-one plan. It's going to be far more similar to any insurance you've had throughout your working life. So it's going to have your medical benefits, your prescription drugs, dental, vision, and hearing potentially, and they're going to cover a much wider variety of items than original Medicare will. Example would be a lot of Medicare Advantage plans cover gym membership benefits. A lot of Medicare Advantage plans cover things like Fitbits. A lot of Medicare Advantage plans will cover things like over-the-counter item essentials, which cover things like aspirin, ibuprofen, fish oil, band-aids, vitamins. And so there's a lot of additional benefits that Medicare typically doesn't provide. Now, I would explain the Medicare Advantage medical benefits as good coverage, probably superior to a lot of under 65 health insurance plans these days, or group plans in a lot of ways. It's not going to be as good as a Medicare supplement be in medical benefits. Um, the best way to think about a Medicare Advantage plan is most health insurances, right, have, have um, large deductibes, right, that in the thousands, right, three, four, five thousand dollars. So any insurance you've had now or have had in the past, you might have experienced that the plan will have a very large deductible that you have to meet before they cover anything substantial. With the Medicare Advantage plan, most Medicare Advantage plans are not going to come with these large medical deductibles, which is very, very good because it limits your out-of-pocket by not having that in their structure, okay? Medicare Advantage plans are typically going to come with medical copays, and typically that's the only thing that you're going to be responsible for. An example to that might be zero to five dollars for a primary care doctor visit, thirty to forty dollars for a specialist visit, ninety dollars for an emergency room visit, maybe two to three hundred dollar copay for an ambulance ride, possibly two to three hundred dollars for a same day surgery, right? Outpatient, in or out. If you spend the night in the hospital, it might be two to three hundred dollars per night for the first five nights, and then after that, they cover you hundred percent for an unlimited amount of days, right? Or however many days they charge. So the copays are very reasonable and very, very low. So it actually keep, protects you quite a bit. And with Medicare Advantage plans, they do have a stop loss. They do have maximum out-of-pockets. 
In my area, they might be somewhere between four to six thousand dollars a year. Now, most people automatically get these confused with deductibles. Don't please don't confuse them. They're very very different things. A max out of pocket isn't a deductible because it doesn't mean you have to pay that amount of money before you receive coverage. It means that you have to. Pay, that's the most that your medical copays could equal out to be over the course of the year. Um, so, exam for an example, if you pay a hundred dollar copay for something and your max out of pocket is five thousand dollars, that hundred dollars you pay goes towards the max, and now you're a hundred dollars less at forty nine hundred. And then if you ever meet that over the course of the calendar year, you receive 100% medical coverage from the insurance company. So the way these plans are structured, well, oftentimes you have to use them quite a bit in order to get anywhere close to your maximum out of pocket. In fact, probably depending on the statistic you're looking at, only about 2 to 4% of people on Medicare Advantage plans in the country reach their maximum out of pocket year in and year out. So it's very hard to do and you have to use it around the clock typically, okay? Now, what are the positives and negatives of a Medicare Advantage plan? Well, the positives would be it's very low in cost for you, right? You're going to have a very low monthly cost to it compared to the other side with a Medicare supplement plan. So that's, that's a big reason why they're as popular as they are. The other thing that's nice about it is it's very simple in how it's structured for you. You're going to have one card for everything. You show one card at the doctor, one, the same card at the pharmacy, a lot of the plans will have the same card at the dentist, and you don't have to keep track of multiple different plans, okay? The other thing that's the positive is they cover a much wider variety of items than original Medicare does, like I mentioned before. Let's talk about the negative, however. The negative would be, on a Medicare Advantage plan, is if you do get sick and if you do end up using the plan quite a bit, even though the copays are reasonable, you're typically going to be in a situation where you know they can add up over time and they can very quickly eat away the monthly cost savings that you have by not be having a Medicare supplement plan. Okay, so if you use it enough, the, the medical costs can eat away at your costs, right? At your savings, right? And, and the copays can add up rather quickly if you use it consistently, right? The other thing about Medicare Advantage plans that I would view as a negative is they can change their benefits year in and year out, okay? So Let's say you know, you're on a plan in 2022 and you really like your plan. Well, open enrollment comes in the fall. That'd be October 15th through December 7th. And that's the time period where you can change your Medicare Advantage plan benefits. Well, they also announce the changes October 1st for the next upcoming year for 2023, right? And your plan could change a little bit. It could change a lot potentially. So let's say you like your plan. It changes a lot and it makes it to where it's not a very good plan for you in the upcoming year. You might have to change the plan and you might have to adjust and, and learn a new company that you might not be as familiar with as your old company. So they, they, they can go through some changes which can cause the plan that you're on before to maybe not be the best plan going forward. So they do change their benefits a little bit. So that's essentially your 10,000 foot view, Mrs. Prospect or Mrs. Mr. Prospect, on Medicare plans. Based on what I just explained to you, does one side or the other jump out to you more than the other? And that's my presentation, guys. So you go with what they go with. They're typically going to lean nine times out of ten. You do that exact presentation. The one side or the other is going to jump out to them more than the other, but you're not giving any kind of biases in your presentation, and you're going where they go. And then once you go where they go, then you can kind of narrow down specific insurance companies and plans that you feel like will best suit them based on their needs and preferences. I hope this helped you guys. Hope this helps you guys learn how to do presentations. This presentation has been incredibly successful for me over the years, and it's also something that has caused me to make a tremendous amount of sales in my career, right? It's a very simple way of explaining it. It simplifies things for people, and it just puts it at a good 10,000 foot view to where they can make a good educated decision. Hope this helps you guys. If you appreciate this video and you appreciate this information, do me a favor, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps me find more agents like you who need to hear this information, who need our help with our free content that we put out weekly. Make sure to comment down below. What are your thoughts? Do you like my presentation? Do you dislike it? I'd love to have a dialogue with you about it. Make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Hit the notification bell so you're notified when we upload every single week. And until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, hope you guys are very successful. Here's to your success and your abundance, and I'll see you at the top. Thanks, guys.